Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Weekly PL Talk. And uh, if you have not seen the matches, we can tell you that uh, some were very expected. Whether it was Liverpool, whether it was Chelsea, whether it was Leicester. Manchester City, there were some unusual ones which were from Leicester City versus Manchester United, and of course, uh, we have to talk about the title race as well. So, plenty of things to talk about. We'll get started with our agenda to begin with, and the first is the post-match reaction. Of course, the except just one match, which is gonna be tomorrow. All the other matches have concluded now. After the new owners, the losing streak of Newcastle still continued, but uh, we will take some post-match reaction thoughts from our guests as well. And uh, then we have Manchester United as our main topic today. the club in crisis at the start of the season we were talking about the club in title race and now we are talking about the club in right crisis and then we'll talk about the title race the three horse race or a four horse race what exactly should we term our title race as and uh, finally cover some of the fan tweets we have got some fan tweets collated together before we get to the main topic uh, mohak let's start with the the fact that did you get to see any of the matches over the weekend Any thoughts yeah, on those? I saw each and every game. I mean, you know, I'm a hardcore football fan, especially hardcore PL fan. So I don't yep. miss any any game. And uh, I mean, I, I was just watching the Newcastle versus Spurs game, and Newcastle played well. To be very honest, I, I was surprised. You know, the way they started because yeah. the fans were there. They were singing. They were very loud. And in the second minute, they scored. And after that goal, you know, the, that first initial ten minutes were were very good for them. But after that, did they crumbled as usual? You know, Newcastle looked in uh, so much pressure, and Spurs uh, took that advantage. And uh, though we know that Nuno likes to play on the counter, but today, you know, Spurs were the team that were more confident going forward with the ball, and that that has that has been the case. You know, against Newcastle, if if you talk about Manchester United, this was the only game where Newcastle, you know, were the better team against their opponent. because we were absolutely pathetic in that game i mean yes ronaldo you know scored twice scored. and we won that game 4-1 but uh, for the first initial 70 minutes new uh, united were nowhere near in the game we we That's you know we true. went to to one up because of the individual brilliances and today as well again, the newcastle game was a pretty balanced one and it finishes with a 3-2 scoreline for spurs uh, with harry kane finally breaking his duck Well, he thought it was an offside, but turned out to be a goal from the technology, a gift from technology. That yeah. nope, you are not offside. And then he assisted are, as well. And, and then, then he assisted, assisted as well for the sun. Yeah, that's just, true. That's true. Just think about Harry Kane to Newcastle in a few months because <laughs> <laughs> there is a it is a possibility. I mean, it's a wild possibility, but it is a possibility. It is. Listen, if uh, I rule. Don't rule that out, but I also don't rule out Harry Kane still going to City, because I think if City was uh, willing to take Ronaldo at his age, I think they would have no problems in spending money on City. No. I I, I mean I just think look, I mean it is obvious that Newcastle United will splash the cash. They they have the financial fair play in their side, and. I mean, like, I'm not speaking as a football fan. I'm speaking as just a businessman. Trust me, I would love to buy a football club from Steve Bruce. Oh, sorry, not Steve Bruce. Whoever the Daniel, whoever the owner of the Sports Direct thing was, Newcastle United. Uh, he's a very good businessman, and he has run Newcastle United on profit for so many years. And even in pandemic, they didn't face that much oh, yeah. losses. And uh, as a as a the new owners can come in and splash the cash and. Uh, this season for Newcastle United is basically about survival, survival. in my opinion. They have to survive, and the next season they will be going all out. Yes, I, I think the splash will start right from January. That's my personal opinion. That uh, the splash will start from January because with the current team and the current manager, obviously manager will change, but the squad depth and squad quality will still remain the same. So they not only need a new manager. they also need a few players in the defense maybe midfield i think newcastle united is not a team uh with even the current quality that 
I expect to see fighting for relegation. Uh, Newcastle United is rather a team. I would say like this. This team has been the same for like last three four years. Yeah. Uh, and when Rafa Benitez was there, this team was decent. I'm not saying they were good. They were decent. They can easily finish twelfth, thirteenth, or fourteenth. And it's just, I think, like they need to let go of Steve Bruce, and, and they need them. Reason for that, you know, is uh, when they selected Steve Bruce as uh, Rafael Benitez's replacement. It wasn't an upgrade. It was actually a downgrade. Yeah, and no, no, and more oh, than that, percent. more than that, with no cash in, with no cash to upgrade the players in the team. There was no manager who was willing to take on that project, and Steve Bruce was the only one who agreed. Apparently, I mean, yeah, Newcastle United is, you know, uh, a downgrade version of Manchester United with Mike Ashley as their owner. Such, you know, same yeah. goes for United. Uh, I'm, I mean, like, let's be very honest. In terms of United, uh, United is a club that's running on profit loss, but obviously there is like a Only huge gap. Yeah, yeah, but there is a huge debt which you have to pay off apparently because you guys have done debt finance. The the Glazers have done debt financing of the debt Manchester finance. United club, yeah. which is which is not a very good thing because there is a very good chance you will never be able to repay all of it off. And on the other hand, Newcastle United doesn't really have debts. They have run a sustainable business model and. Okay, in terms of quality, you can say it's basically a downgraded version of Manchester United in terms of like what looks on the face. But Mike Ashley has done a very good business there, and the new owners have inherited a very interesting project, in my opinion. I mean, like it's just a start. I cannot term it as an interesting project. It's I mean, like, let's be very honest. The football manager 22 comes out in a couple of weeks. So that's the club I am going with. I usually select a club I want to have a project with, and let's see what Football Manager predicts them to do because they usually predict things very accurately. But Sarthak, one thing I would disagree or uh, would think more from a fan's perspective, right? You could also say in those from th- that angle that Norwich City is doing a fantastic job. in terms of keeping its fl- club finances in check but every club has to have some objectives some goals towards the fans as well and i mean, I mean like not... norwich city also has debts so not... but they have they some doing... i mean like what uh, what they are doing is basically trying to go up and down and up and down of what that's exactly my point that's exactly uh, my point that but my cash not... is Mike Ashley's goal has always been for Newcastle United to survive as a Premier League team, and obviously, as a club as historic as Newcastle United, I mean, like you might not have won as many trophies as you would want, uh, as you would have seen some of the other clubs like Liverpool. Just wait a minute. Just just let me finish. Just let me finish. As United and Liverpool have won, but Newcastle United is an iconic club, and I mean, like. You go to Newcastle. They are a one city. They are a one club city, basically. So it's similar to like Leeds, basically. Like people in Newcastle are crazy about Newcastle United. It, and what I think that the new ownership group, obviously, there is this huge discussion around human rights and everything going on. Uh, I don't think it is the right platform to address it. Uh, but that is for. obviously the premier league to decide with the new owners how they want to take it forward and obviously it needs to be addressed but with the new ownership i believe that when like you have owners with deep pockets uh the new objective probably next season won't be to survive the premier league it will be probably aiming for the bottom end of the Wait. top 7 to be trying to get into the conference league then slowly climbing to the europa league and building it on from there because it takes time to gel uh, time for a team to go through a transition period and we have seen that with all the even the big teams as well like we have seen that with chelsea we have seen that with 
Manchester United. We'll come to that later. It's still going in transition. We are seeing that with Manchester City as well. So yeah, you as as Newcastle United fan, what I would say like the realistic goal next season would be if the owners splash the cash, qualify for the Conference League and build it up from there. Okay, you were saying something. Yeah, I was saying, but there are many other games in that we should talk more about because yeah. Newcastle is, you know, is, is they played their first game under new ownership, but the, Liverpool versus Watford, what a game that was! Yeah, five 0 Brilliant, brilliant. And I mean, Salah, I, I mean, brilliant. I have a question for both of you: that uh, do you think that Salah is the best player at the moment in the world? I, I mean, like. He does things. He has that individual brilliance, and he has everything going his way. And uh, I mean, like, let's be very honest. I as uh, if I am a team owner, I would love to have Mo Salah in my team playing for my side because he is a very good team man as well. Like, he provides assists, he scores goals, and he brings those moments of individual brilliance and. Uh, if there is another player who can, uh, who is at that same level of Salah as of now, it's probably Karim Benzema. Like they both are class apart at this moment in time. But in terms of, in terms of being the best player in the world, I mean, like let's let's see. Like the title race will decide it basically. I think I think if I had to choose to Mohit's point, right? If I had to choose Salah as the best player, I think the true test for Salah to be the best player. I mean. Like you said, uh, this league obviously the season is in progress, so it may be too early to decide whether he's the best at the moment. But the true moment for him was last year. If he, as an individual, could have made Liverpool better in terms of you know the title race, uh, in terms of being there, uh, in terms of scoring goals with individual brilliance, he relies on the kind of box-to-box, fast-paced play. That is being provided by rest of the Liverpool backline, the wing backs, the midfielders, you know, who are running relentlessly. So yes, he feeds off them, and uh, he scores goals. So to me, considering him as the best player is like saying that uh, Gabriel Jesus is the best forward uh, that is currently out there in uh, uh, Premier League, which is not true because he feeds off the team. He's if you put him in a team like Manchester United per se, or let's say even Chelsea per se, he may not uh, be the same person as what you see him. I think it's because of the team that he's being made to look good. Absolutely. I mean, also, I mean, also like, I, yeah. uh, I mean, I'll be very honest here. If you look at Salah's goal tally last season, as you said that he could have made Liverpool into a title contender last season. But look at that Liverpool team of last season. They were playing with the fourth and fifth choice centre back. You know, they 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 were made to play Henderson and Fabinho in that centre back department. So the team was very unbalanced. And also, you know, Salah was the only one who was who was scoring continuously. It wasn't Mane, it wasn't Firmino, but it was Salah who carried them through that patch of theirs and you know secured that number fourth spot for Liverpool. So. I'm not judging him on the basis of the performance that he has delivered against Watford or Man City. What basically he has done over the last three, four years, you know, I don't think that anyone has made such a great impact on a team than what Salah has made on Liverpool. Not even Ruben Diaz, not even, you know, Ronaldo at Juventus, not even Messi at Barcelona last season, not even, uh, you know, Virgil van Dijk at Liverpool. Because Salah, what he has done, is scoring goals, assisting goals, and you know, uh, I like his mentality. Yes, he is yeah, selfish. Certainly. You know, I, I I like I like that because when you are the highest goal scorer in your team, you need to be selfish because you look at his finishing, man. It's his one touch finishing is absolutely spot on. I mean, there's no player better than him in that area at the moment in the Premier League. Though he's at a rival, moment, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a scouser. But as a United fan, I hate to say this, but he is the best player in the Premier League right now. Not even Ronaldo, not even Bruno, not even KDB. But Salah is the best player at the moment. I mean, like you would say, I would just have to disagree with that point in terms of, like, as you said before, like Liverpool were playing with their fourth and fifth choice 
center backs last season they had to put henderson and fabinho in there sometimes they even went to play joel matip <laughs> so uh and salah was still scoring goals fair play to him uh he definitely had that impact on liverpool but if i have to pick like which player had the most impact on liverpool i would say that for me it would be van dijk definitely i mean like attack wins you games defense wins you titles and we have seen that time and time again and take van dijk out of that liverpool side uh, their entire team destabilizes to a certain extent and to, in my just opinion he just have a greater impact on that liverpool team than mosala I, i i would slightly differ uh, sathak on that in the sense that uh, either van dijk or sala i think uh, you need both of them to be out in the current liverpool team for yeah. them to be ruled out uh, i think one is providing hell lot of goals and the other is providing a brilliant leadership a brilliant calm in the defense so to sarthak's point uh, mohak's point right that uh, it was a makeshift liverpool team yesterday but listen pep that's where i count more on the clock uh, theory and philosophy right uh, philosophy of clock is not person based it's more of based upon gangham pre- pressing all the time and uh, i think they were still pretty good uh, the kind of players they had it's not like they were completely yes they had to do with makeshift defense their good players were out from defense mostly last time but even then they still had a young academy to count on you know uh, the club was still and that's where the best managers count that's where you know if i go back to sir alex ferguson's days right players like uh, what kind of quality they had uh, during the injury uh, prone seasons yet they he was able to come back with some kind of academy players some way of fitting in you know carrick at the uh, carrick uh, michael carrick in the defense and still be able to keep himself in the title race and coming to the point about being in top 4 right i think it was the goal from ellison which probably kept them in the <laughs> champions league the last time i don't think that lucky other than that lucky goal they would have deserved even to be in the champions league so uh, I- it was it was manchester united who basically gifted them away the fourth spot because we lost our you know three games on a row and yeah. we lost against you know them as well they were clearly yeah. under pressure till till the moment you know leicester uh, dropped points against if i'm not wrong man city and the other yeah. game week they played against us and they secured a draw or yeah. even they i think they defeated us you know so that paved the way for liverpool to come back into come their fourth spot exactly and and secure that champions league you know spot but uh let's be honest i mean this season everyone was saying that liverpool might not be uh, performing well and i i including myself you know i i stated that it, i'm not counting liverpool to be in the top 2 or top 3 but at the moment the way their individual players are performing they're not performing well as a as a as a team to be very honest but those individual brilliances you know that sala is producing that mane is producing and even bobby firmino i mean the world is in danger the guy has scored a hat trick you know uh, i mean the guy rarely scores because he is a defensive holding midfielder full back you know at, at the last place everywhere <laughs> you know <laughs> so place everywhere and you you know that uh, everything is going right for liverpool at the moment and the only thing that is not going right for manchester united is everything what i think about managers and that's what separate the good managers from the great managers is when you are going through crisis every team goes through crisis everything every team has injury crisis on average a premier league team suffers around 17 injuries in the season so and you bring in the academy players and motivate them to play for your club because in my opinion like mohak just correct me if i am wrong for an youngster for an academy player who has come through the ranks of manchester united pulling out that shirt pulling out that shirt for the senior team and either saving a goal in the last minute through their defense or scoring at stretford in this probably all of their dreams and yeah. the manager has to provide that motivation for them 
I mean, like, you have, uh, we have seen for Chelsea, like, Trevor Chalova in his first game, he scored. I mean, he's a defender. We have seen what it, what it meant for him. And that is what it means for players or players coming through any academy and playing for the same club. They have come, they have played their academy football in and scoring their first ever senior goal or basically making sure that the team gets three points and the best managers basically just motivate the Arribu. young players. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that point and also Sarthak, you know, if you look at uh, yesterday's performance of Manchester United, it was basically pathetic in, it, in short, in one word if I have to define it. The main reason is they were not prepared, you know, Brendan Rodgers came well prepared for this game. He knew that United will try to play from the back and they pressed and they pressed at us really, really, you know, high. The the moment, you know, Maguire was there on the field. Initially, my, my first thought was, okay, we're trusting our main centre-back here. This, the partnership that has played together for the last two seasons, you know, it's it's a very good lineup. But the initial first five minutes clearly showed the picture, the true picture. The Ianacho, Ianacho, Wardy were ripping Maguire apart because every time the guy had the ball, Ianacho was pressing him. And it wasn't just Ianacho. Madison even, you know, uh, trying to cover that space between the lines to get the ball. You know, and, and this this is what, you know, a manager does. If the manager knew what the opponents will bring to the table, he prepares for, for the worst outcome, you know. And that's where Solskjaer lacks. Last night, I, I saw a man a helpless man looking up to the sky, you know, praying for the for, from God that please produce a moment of magic. And you know, this this is this is a reality. To be very honest, because last night there was not even a single player apart from David Deya who performed to even the fifty percent of the true potential. Paul Pogba won two duels, the two ground duels out of fifteen that he went for. You know, he won zero aerial duels. Matic. We were not even winning the second balls. And if you're second playing, balls. you know, a team that is playing on the counter, you must be winning the second balls to kill uh, that counter. I mean, like time and time again, we know about second balls. Like the second balls are the most important balls in the Premier League. Like if you remember the yeah. first season, Pep Guardiola came in with all his Barcelona philosophy and stuff. Yeah. They played the end, you know, he said. Blew him in the very first season. Yes. So, he basically decided that, okay, he has to adapt his philosophy to get to the second balls first in the Premier League. And in my opinion, United shouldn't have started Maguire first. Uh, Maguire in the first team yesterday because he was not even fully fit. I mean, like, as Mohawk said, like from the highlights, what I have seen, what they have done well is basically they isolated Maguire and just targeted him left, right and centre. Absolutely. And not but, just him, you know, Sarthak and Prashant I mean, uh, sorry to cut you off here. But uh, the thing here is, if you look at that Dhaka goal, you know, that the, the came, that came from free kick, Maguire was standing kick. there, you know. He, he did not even bend for the ball. He did not, uh, uh, you know, even bother to, to close down Dhaka when he was running behind him. Then again, you know, the goal that we conceded, the first goal, Enacho put the goal. pressure in him. And, and won the ball, ball back very easily. So, this clearly shows that the manager was not in his right senses when he selected that playing 11. Yes, I mean, so like, I, I, to, be, I think, uh, to be really honest with Manchester, I mean, like, to be really honest with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, what I personally think is the players don't know what they are supposed to do on the pitch. It's basically like pass the ball to Ronaldo and Inshallah. But exactly, that's exactly where I want to come to because this is exactly where I thought that uh, when Ronaldo came in, I mean, I was very happy. Trust me, I wasn't. Uh, I was the happiest guy probably, you know, in ages that Ronaldo is coming back because I've grown up watching him. Uh, but my problem was that all the progress, all the philosophies that uh, Solskjaer started with right from that 4-0 loss against Everton in his very first half season that we will come back with more pressing, with more uh, running. Suddenly, and, and we don't want players like Zlatan. I think Zlatan was amazing when he was there. Because, but the problem with Zlatan was that there was no plan B. 
that Mourinho had as soon as Zlatan was injured because everything was getting centered around Zlatan and suddenly when Zlatan is gone they don't have any plan b same thing uh, the same thing that i'm seeing right now is it looks like as if ronaldo has just disturbed the whole cart that ole was building uh, right from season to season which is you know the two two things to support that number one everything is now being centered like every team member is just thinking pass it to ronaldo and he will do the magic if you see but he's not doing any magic number two the kind of domination i mean the kind of strong opinionated person ronaldo is that kind of selfishness it's good to be selfish on the pitch when you are scoring goals but it's other thing to be selfish and dictating the terms of the play of the team which i think if it would have been sir alex ferguson he would have never have allowed it but in this case I mean, if, if it was sir alex ferguson i mean like i generally i just think like there was no way united would have bought ronaldo in the first would have place got ronaldo yeah so i feel like the kind of statements You're talking about sir one... alex here you know he is yeah. the main man who helped the team to get ronaldo on board so yeah, but... this, you know no 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 he wouldn't he wouldn't have planning to it you know he was I'm, planning to get him back in 2013 if he wasn't you know, but 20 th- i mean in 2013 let's be honest 2013 it was a different ronaldo and uh currently what it feels like let's be very honest it's not probably even ronaldo's problem it's probably the manager's problem and i definitely think it is the manager's problem that he's trying to center everything around ronaldo is that what they are missing at the moment a player who can make their play from box to box or is it everywhere the problem is because defense like you rightly said right mohan uh, harry maguire he was the guy who was attack left right center yesterday uh, and that's where actually interestingly today morning when i was researching this news came out about uh, julius conde that uh, manchester united one source has told that they are very interested in partnering him with rafael varan I, i mean like to be really honest with harry maguire i i think like he's a very good defender i just think that i mean like just like strikers you have to utilize your defenders pro- properly as well and for some reason or the other i just think like harry maguire will play really well in a three defense formation as the left center back and that's just my personal feelings and Ooh. yesterday he should he that shouldn't have played be... yesterday mm-hmm. he shouldn't have played yesterday in the first place like doesn't matter the ma- uh, capability of the game like even if it is a game of the game which can de- ultimately define your top four top four moment harry maguire shouldn't have played yesterday he was just unfit to start yesterday apart from the two mistakes that he committed last i mean in the last game or the three mistakes that he committed in the last game yeah. three mistakes are, are, are a lot but then again you know against west ham i, I cannot blame harry maguire all alone because uh, you know it came it came from the the, the mistake from rafael varan and harry maguire both of them were were included you know and uh, the the basic difference that a team can make is by controlling the tempo of the game in the midfield and yesterday we did not do that and when you put an unfit as you said you did not feel that harry maguire was unfit uh i i would want you to you know rewatch that uh, that those moments in which you know he was under pressure he wasn't feeling mm-hmm. well you know while he was chasing the ball or while while he was even carrying the ball he wasn't feeling very well because he was looking shaky he was you know taking his time before he was controlling the ball there were two or three instances where he could have easily passed it to luke shaw but rather went for a long ball and you know squeezed it away or, or at the at the away end and if you are doing that and this clearly shows the you know indication that the guy is not fit and this this responsibility of checking the player that he, is he fit or not lies on the shoulders of the manager Boy, and that's where you know solshar has let not just the team down but the entire fan base down because you were 29 games unbeaten and when you were you know on a such good run on the away, away turf and you went against a team that were dropping points in the last it's four games drawing points. two and you know lo- losing two so you you must be doing something really well because your next game will be against liverpool in the premier league and before that you will be playing atlanta 
a much more dominant side in terms of the the counter attacking play because atlanta is one of the finest teams on the counters it is almost uh, like managerial team. skills there are managerial skills required to manage any team like do you think manchester united is devoid of leaders in the dressing room let's be very honest cristiano ronaldo you can't have a bigger leader than him in the dress, dressing room in my opinion it's just my personal opinion he is a bigger motivator of the team than leo messi than anyone else bruno fernandes he is a leader harry maguire doesn't matter he is a leader as well harry maguire he is a leader nemanja matic he is a senior experienced player he is a leader paul pogba the person who is dissed by manchester united fans all the time usually and to all the fault of his own he is a leader as well you manchester united have got leaders as well but at the end of the day it is the manager who has to basically calm down the egos within the dressing room keep everyone in check and make sure that you are going towards a common goal uh, and so, and, so and that these, this is on that basis sorry finish finish up and uh, and that's basically what i think that has happened at chelsea as well time and time again uh, how to manage us get sacked at chelsea we all know the senior players turns again turn against them it's just, it, if you want to sack a manager in, at chelsea it's very simple the senior players just turn up turn against them turn yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it yeah, happened to say but but then the point is uh, sarthak that uh, sacking managers will not win you the league title they can yeah. win you some of the champions leagues they can win you some of the yeah, and it works well for chelsea win. you know it's it's actually work, it has worked it works well for us it's, it's just a model that works for us it won't work for anyone else i imagine and uh, to be really honest uh, to be really honest winning the premier league in my opinion is way tougher than winning the champions league because in champions league once you clear the group stage it's the knockout fixtures knockout. and and it's basically you just need a different mentality to play those knockout fixtures what do you think about uh, one of these three do you think liverpool and city have chances to see anyone at the moment you know to be very honest because it's too early to judge as sarthak mm-hmm. said that you know uh, you cannot mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. count uh, united out of this scenario You can't. You can't even put you know Tottenham out of this scenario as well. Uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, let's be very honest. We can count Tottenham out as soon as February starts. Tottenham, I would not uh, count them in. I think uh, they are a good team, but I think they are not a title winners team. I don't. I don't have a water bottle in front of me. But, else. but but they can but they can actually you know spoil the party for any. They they, they can spoil the party. Spoil yeah. the party. Yeah. They can they can be party poopers, but yeah, that's what they can be in my opinion. They don't have a, a Tottenham team. Uh, in my opinion, there are certain players who want to leave this team as soon as possible. It's just Daniel Levy who are basically keeping them to their contracts and not letting them leave. I mean, like, let's be very honest. Harry Kane wanted to leave. It was not even a secret. He wanted to leave this very season, and if given a chance, Hummings and will leave as well. And I, as an Asian, I just want to see Hummings and in a better team than Tottenham, where he can actually win something. It will just help put more Asian players on the map. That's it. And uh, just very quickly, right? I want to bring your attention to the. greatest and the best of the tweets that came in today so this was very interesting tweet that came in from Howard Borden who says Leeds Brazilian international on the subs bench having flown from south america it was an amazon next day delivery he yeah, literally came from amazon <laughs> literally came from amazon exactly amazon then there was another next one which was more of a Uh, more of a source that Arsenal have ended their interest in uh, Bissouma. It looks like Bissouma had a very bad uh, international break. It was caught doing the wrong things, or what? I don't know whatever he was doing. So looks like Arsenal has ended their. Uh, I mean, like team. let's let's be honest. Who in their right mind? I mean, like not saying about what Bissouma did was right, but who in their right mind would want to sign for Arsenal? Well, Arsenal can sign these players. Arsenal I mean, cannot sign players like uh, 
what uh, Harry Kane's or uh, I mean, like the. I mean, like I would really love to see Harry Kane play for Arsenal anyway because he's a boyhood Arsenal fan. Of course, we didn't cover the best of uh, Aston Villa Wolves. The 95th minute goal that uh, Aston Villa, oh, sorry, Wolves scored and uh, came back from 2-0 down. But this was a one-man show from Aston Villa. John McGinn. I mean, I love what this uh, fan had uh, tweeted: most crosses, most chances created, take-ons. tackles goal and an assist but so didn't deserve to be on the losing side any thoughts one of those days i'm yeah. going to jump on the tweet that uh, you were talking about sala so this guy actually tweeted a very interesting uh, information he said how am i supposed to tell my future kids kids that mo sala managed to score after being in this position i mean you have the entire what watford team yeah Surrounding. He has done it, you know, uh, two years back against Watford. Do you remember? You know, yeah. he had he had uh, around eight players inside the box, and he managed to score. You know, pass them. So, and you look at that Man City goal. You look at that Watford goal. You know, two two consecutive games, two identical goals. You know, one came from the right foot, one came from the left foot, but both came from the same position it's and same style of play. and that's how this picture depicts actually you know a pack of wolves against one guy who just brushes them aside and scores well, the the pack of wolves won against villa yesterday so pack of wolves won against villa and the next one is of course from manchester united from a guy called fan chan from a twitter handle called fan chans united with fred in away games 30 games unbeaten united without fred in away games unbeaten streak loss <laughs> I'm not, I mean, like we were discussing. Yeah. Anyone see? Anyone saw Mark Goldrich dream yesterday? I I don't understand how he comes up with all those stuff he says. I just don't understand. He said like United looks like United team on the field looks like a field full of cow and laxatives. I don't understand how he comes up with oh, those stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, I just hope that I just hope I just hope that the top teams like United and Arsenal, just for the sake of Premier League, they turn it around. They they sort out whatever the issues they have. Because let's be very honest, we don't watch League One and we don't watch Bundesliga because of a particular reason. Because it's boring. quality on the competition yeah I and mean, like it's 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 competitive in a certain way but everyone loses against psg or if well psg have lost the last two game two out of three games i guess but yeah everyone usually loses to psg and bayern munich and then lastly from the leeds united fan we had why do you make a mistake of coming on twitter every time leeds you loses a game you are allowed to criticize and moan but you would think people forget the state of the club four years ago With some of the comments, which is very true, actually. The yeah, Leeds were well, like in League One, I guess. League One or League One? Yes. Yeah. They came And from League One to Championship. It's basically, I mean, like, I mean, like the people of Leeds are very passionate people as well. And all they have got is Leeds United to support. Leeds are a club, you know, that is solely based on passion, you know. the the hardmanship of their fans and they are a working class you know group of people yeah. so they they are and not just them the, the birmingham people you know and the united fans as well these in yeah. newcastle and the sunderland fans these all are working class people they they earn their money they spend it on their club because they love the club so much and if their club is not performing well it took 16 years for leeds to come back into the premier league that's a very long time and if they are seeing that there is a possibility they might go down this season you know with the kind of form they are in at the moment i hope that they, they turn it around because i i have missed the greater part of the rose derby and i don't want to miss it any any more because uh, leeds and united are is a proper footballing li- rivalry you know when we talk about yeah. yes when we talk about rivalries in foot, in english in, in english league when we talk about liverpool versus united we talk about birmingham versus you know leeds villa. Uh, birmingham villa birmingham versus villa and uh, you know leeds versus united so 
so these are the games that we we wait for want to watch yeah yeah and if leads are not there in the premier league next season then it will be a very shameful thing not yeah. just for leeds fans but also for the entire premier league fan base premier league community it's like aston villa i mean i can tell you how much i missed as having aston villa just not Absolutely, because absolutely 110% i mean they are a historic club you want to start the line and I, and, I, and, I, and i and i and i dearly miss you know uh, nottingham forest as well you know yeah. two, two i should be there in the premier league because they have won two european titles if i'm not wrong and yeah. for for a club like them you know to be in the championship for the for for the last 10 years if i'm not wrong 10 or 12 years yeah. I, mean, i mean that also shows you the competitiveness in english football like let's be very honest championship is one of and the, the most difficult league. one of the, yeah the importance, the importance of money obviously and championship is one of the most difficult leagues to get out of come out of yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean like we have, i mean like we, we, you say about you say about money right we have seen huddersfield and sunderland going back to back relegations with parachute payments perfect so this concludes the weekly epl talk uh, thank you so much for joining and uh, we'll have the next conversation next week at the same time uh thank you and uh, have a great week ahead and uh, thanks uh, the guests for joining as well